Hey guys and girls, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Hugh C. Fishing. Today's episode, I'm getting my boat ready to go to the St. Lawrence River for the last Bassmaster Open. And I was going to talk to you guys about what I do to get my boat ready for big water. Uh, some of the stuff that I did, some of the stuff you should look for to tighten the way you should load your boat and other things that I might think of. So stay tuned. So the biggest thing uh, is going to be making sure that everything is tightened down. Um, things like your troll motor foot pedal, your troll motor itself. Um, we'll go to the back. We'll look at some of the stuff that will come loose for your motor, power poles, stuff like that. I'm going to point them out. Um, and there's just the, these are the things that I'll tighten between days or before I even go on a trip to make sure that everything is locked down tight. Um, so the first thing is going to be actually where your jack plate will mount to the transom of the boat. How the motor mounts to the jack plate, um, your power pole bracket mounts, as well as the power poles themselves. Um, as you can see on mine, I'll point it real quick, but you can actually see how much my power pole brackets vibrate and how much they come loose in a really rough water tournament. Um, you can see where the paint was scratched away and how much the bracket moves itself. So it's pretty crazy, it's pretty crazy and really helps to emphasize how much uh, rough water has an impact on the stuff that you, the stuff on your boat. Um, you're also going to want to look at your motor mounted to the jack plate, the power pole mounted to the bracket, and then the two bottom bolts on your power pole. I'll point them out right here. Those are the ones that you really want to look out for. You do not want to tighten the top ones. That'll make it harder for your power poles to go down. But you can wiggle your power pole back and forth and see how loose it is. Um, it'll actually, those get really loose and it'll allow your power pole to fall a little bit even without you pushing the down button. So uh, those are the main things that you really want to look for for uh, the brackets and stuff like that. Um, you also want to make sure that all your connections on your batteries are completely tight um, before you get out there because sometimes they'll loosen up. If you don't have a good connection, you're not going to have enough power. Um, you want to make sure that your straps are tightened all the way on your batteries. And this might this might not be a problem for everybody, but my cranking battery, I actually have a lithium. The lithium battery is smaller than the battery tray that I have in there, so I cut some pieces of wood. Uh, I cut some pieces of wood, put it around the edge uh, to make sure that my battery's not moving back and forth. You want to make sure that your fish finders are as tight as possible. I'm talking about the knobs mounting it to the bracket and then the screws themselves. Um, and also, I'm going to be talking about the shroud a little bit. You can see where my shroud is actually ripped. Um, that was a really, really, really rough water tournament. And I put, that was only with the factory screws. So I actually ended up putting like eight more in. Um, and now it is rock solid. It's not going anywhere. It hasn't, hasn't budged since I put those more screws in. Uh, talking about the troll motor. I always like having my foot pedal locked down. I don't like it bouncing up and down. Uh, make sure your mount is actually bolted directly into the uh, deck. I do not like those bow mounts that are that go into the panel I don't like the I don't like those I don't feel like they're secure enough so I always actually have a deck mount um, this is a mealy marine mount it's rock solid my fish finders aren't gonna move anywhere same thing making sure these are tight making sure the screws to the mount itself are tight another huge thing you want to look for is your troll motor itself another reason that I don't have uh, uh, a panel mount for my front fish finders is actually so I could take that uh, shroud off make sure that my my bolts my screws to the troll motor are actually tight there's six of them and even if you have lock washers on there they still come loose so i actually have my double lock nutted to make sure that they don't come loose um, you want to make sure you don't over tighten them because you actually break the bolt uh, and then you'll be out of luck i upgraded the bounce buster that comes with the min coda troll motor to the th marine troll tamer and that's the one that locks down so it's not going anywhere i had a problem a couple years ago where i actually took a chunk out of my boat because I had the factory bounce buster, but now that I upgraded to the TH Marine Troll Tamer, haven't had a problem since then, it's locked down. I run a 360, Mega 360 on my boat, uh, and even though they are rated um, and designed to be in rough water, um, I have a stabilizer on there. I have a Ashmore Marine Products stabilizer. Uh, still allows it to bend a little bit, but um, it's just another security because I don't want that thing snapping in half when I'm in really rough water. Uh, make sure your troll motor strapped down all the way. Some people have two straps. I don't have that, but one strap one strap is good enough for most of the time. Unless you're a really bad boat driver, then you might need two. Besides making sure that everything is tightened down, um, another thing is actually going to be loading the boat. Um, just as people load the boat to go faster by putting more weight in the back, we're actually going to move some weight forward. Um, and it's not a ton of weight. 
Um, the only thing that I really do is I move my soft plastics. I use my big tub of soft plastics that's like 12 by 18 by 6. And by moving it, it actually makes a huge difference. It's a lot softer ride. You're letting the hole do the work. Um, it's bringing the hole down onto the next wave quicker. And sometimes you really want that to make sure that you're not um, going too high, landing too far back on the hole. You bought your boat hole for a reason. They're shaped perfectly and you want to make sure that you're using the best that you can. So when we move that weight to the front, we're actually making the front of the boat where there's more of a diamond shape to the hole, cut through the waves a lot better. As you go further back, you're actually making your, your hole is shaped differently. It's becoming more flat and it's not cutting through the waves as good. So we want to make sure we're putting a little more weight at the front of the boat, making sure we're cutting through the waves. Uh, and it's actually a lot softer whenever you're taking a little bit more waves towards the front of the boat uh, and slicing through them. So those are just a couple things that I do, um, making sure everything's tight, uh, power poles, motor mount, my fish finders, my shrouds, uh, and some of the upgrades that I did, like the TH Marine Troll Tamer, the stabilizer for my 360, and then talking about moving more weight forward. It doesn't have to be a crazy amount of weight, but just some weight will make a pretty big difference. Um, so those are just some of the things that I do to get my boat ready for rough water. Uh, if I left something out or if there's something you guys do differently, uh, make sure to comment that below. Uh, and I'll see if I can add it to another video in the future. But I want to say thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. And catch them in the next big water tournament you're in.